36 acres. That's what makes up the University of Wisconsin. But that's not what the UW is made of. This is an institution that pays no attention to boundaries, except when it's pushing them. Where others see limits, Badgers see new frontiers and are limited only by the imagination. Because Wisconsin is inspired by an idea. The Wisconsin idea. I shall never be content until the beneficent influence of the university reaches every family of the state. A guiding philosophy that defies the odds. A calling to go beyond. It's what drives us to take the roads less traveled. It's how we can unearth a new chapter in human history. It's what happens when four quarters of football weren't enough. It's how we're wired. To tune out the naysayers so innovations can be channeled. How else can you explain a university that's a leading producer of Fortune 500 CEOs and Peace Corps volunteers? Maybe the Wisconsin ideal is a better way to describe it. Because the UW is a hotbed for those who challenge the status quo. 
strive for the greater good. Change the world. But breakthroughs can't happen if you're not willing to push. With the Wisconsin Idea as our guide, expect nothing less. Because Badgers keep charging forward. All ways forward. On Wisconsin. Welcome, welcome, graduates, parents, families, and distinguished guests, class of 2023. How are we feeling today? My name is Parm Shiraz, and I'm the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Director for the Senior Class Office. It is my honor to welcome you here today to the 170th commencement ceremony here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Today is a day for celebration. As we all know, Madison loves to celebrate. Whether it's a big win here at Camp Randall or the first 50 degree day of the year, when Badgers flock to the terrace to get their first pitcher of spotted cow and basket of cheese curds of the season. You might even get lucky and see your professor in shorts. <laughs> we deserve to celebrate. The class of 2023 has endured a lot and it has tested our patience and resilience as Badgers. We had just six months of normalcy in college before our worlds got turned upside down. We lived through a global pandemic and a new social movement. And ultimately, we saw Madison as a shell of itself. Campus buildings were deserted, the roar of student cheers at the Kohl Center and Camp Randall were silenced, and State Street storefronts were boarded up. But what is it that Badgers do best? We charge forward. We overcome times of uncertainty and rise to the occasion. Today is our day, one to celebrate all of our hard work, dedication, and community for the past four years. So Badgers, here's to you. Always forward on Wisconsin. Now, here is Redefine Acapella, UW-Madison's premier mixed voice acapella group performing the song Chosen Family today. This song focuses on the relationships not bound by blood, but by friendship and community. To the graduating class of 2023, we will always be connected as a family of Badger alumni, no matter where our futures take us. Give it up for Redefine Acapella. <laughs> Chosen family, so what if we don't? 
Thank you, Redefine, for that wonderful performance. It is my honor to introduce Eric M. Wilcott, who is serving as the Interim Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Professor Wilcott is the Dean of the College in Letters and Science and the Mary C. Jacoby Professor of Astronomy in the Department of Astronomy, where he's been on the faculty since 1995. Professor Wilcott earned his undergraduate degree in astrophysical sciences from Princeton University and his PhD in astronomy University of Washington. He's been integral to UW's involvement in the Southern African Telescope Project, the largest optical telescope in the Southern Hemisphere. He is also a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Please help me in welcoming Interim Provost Eric Wilcox. Thank you, Parham. Good afternoon. And welcome to Camp Randall Stadium and to the 2023 spring commencement of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Whether you are joining us here in person or through our live stream, we are one Badger community on this special day. I want to acknowledge that the land that UW-Madison inhabits is the ancestral home of the Ho-Chunk Nation, one of the 12 First Nations of Wisconsin. Today, our stage includes the flags of the United States, the state of Wisconsin, and the flag of the Ho-Chunk Nation. These flags are symbols of our commitment to work towards the well-being of citizens of this state, the nation, and the world. This is an important step in UW-Madison's Our Shared Future initiative, which is an ongoing effort to educate the campus and the broader community on the Ho-Chunk Nation and the history it shares with the university. Graduates, family members, and guests, please rise as you are able for the 2023 Spring Commencement Academic Procession. The procession is led by class of 1973 alumna, Linda Berman, a member of the Half Century Badgers, a proud representative of all our Badgers around the world. Linda is escorted by class of 2023 degree candidate, Jackson Walker, carrying the Wisconsin Alumni Association Half Century Badger flag. Following the Wisconsin Alumni Association flag are the selected flag bearers from each of our schools and colleges selected by their deans for this special honor. <laughs> Thank you. 
Please remain standing and join May Kohler, Class of 2023, Bachelor of Arts and Music Performance candidate, in singing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocky Thank you. Thank you, May, for that wonderful performance. Please be seated. And now, it is my honor to introduce our official party. Chancellor Jennifer Manukin, 82nd Attorney General Eric H. Holder, Jr., Jay Rothman, President of the UW System, Amy Bogus, Vice President of the UW System Board of Regents, Liam McLean, Senior Class President. Parham Shiraz, Senior Class Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer. Molly Noyan, Senior Class Engagement Director. Kevin Jacobson, Senior Class Communications Director. Marguerite Wyatt, Senior Class Vice President. Sydney Bob, Senior Class Speaker. Faith Ochoco, Senior Class Speaker. Aaron Shoemaker, Senior Class Philanthropy Director. Gina Musso, Senior Class Events Director. William Carpus, Dean of the Graduate School. Dan Tokaji, Dean of the Law School. Steve Swanson, Dean of the School of Pharmacy. Soyan Shim, Dean of the School of Human Ecology. Balab Sambamurthy, Dean of the Wisconsin School of Business. 
Ian Robertson, Dean of the College of Engineering. Scott of Chautic, University Registrar. Glenda Gillespie, Dean of the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences. Susan Zeski, Associate Dean for Arts and Humanities College of Letters and Science. Diana Hess, Dean of the School of Education. Linda Scott, Dean of the School of Nursing. Robert Golden, Dean of the School of Medicine and Public Health. Christina Olstad, Dean of Students. Lori Resor, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. Charles Hoslett, Vice Chancellor for University Relations. Steve Ackerman, Vice Chancellor for Research and Graduate Education. Rob Kramer, Vice Chancellor for Finance and Administration. LeVar Charleston, Chief Diversity Officer, Deputy Vice Chancellor for Diversity and Inclusion. Nancy Lynch, Vice Chancellor for Legal Affairs. Barry Gerhardt, Interim Vice Provost and Dean of the International Division. Carl Martin, Dean and Director of the Division of Extension. Mark Markell, Dean of the School of Veterinary Medicine. Jeff Russell, Vice Provost and Dean of Continuing Studies. Paul Robbins, Dean of the Nelson Institute of Environmental Studies. Sarah Shute, Chief Alumni Officer and Executive Director of the Wisconsin Alumni Association. Lauren Papp, Professor in the School of Human Ecology and Chair of the University Committee, the Executive Committee of the Faculty Senate. Heather Daniels, Secretary of Faculty. Today we are also joined by faculty participating in our academic procession Please join me in welcoming all of these individuals. <clears throat> it is now my honor to introduce Chancellor Jennifer Minukin. She took office in August as the 30th leader in the university's nearly 175 year history. Chancellor Mnuchin, one of the nation's leading legal scholars, has spent her academic career at top public universities, most recently at UCLA, where she was on the faculty for 17 years and for the last seven years served as the dean of the UCLA Law School. She has also served on the faculty of the University of Virginia and Harvard and holds degrees from Harvard, Yale, and MIT. She has spent her first year here at UW-Madison focused on learning, listening, and working to understand this great university. She is deeply impressed by UW-Madison's commitment to educational excellence and the ways in which the university incorporates leading edge scientific research and its mission of public service into the student experience to support each of our talented graduates on their path toward a life that's meaningful and satisfying. Please join me in welcoming Chancellor Jennifer Minukin. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's just, it's my great honor to welcome you to Camp Randall Stadium and the 170th commencement here at the University of Wisconsin Madison. Look at you, wow! <clears throat> so we've even, it's not a beautiful sunny day, but we've kept the rain and the lightning at bay. And you know, if you don't like the Wisconsin weather, say it with me, just wait a day and it'll change. And so I suspect tomorrow will be absolutely beautiful. And in the meantime, this is a beautiful day to celebrate the extraordinary class of 2023. Today, we confer 7,826 degrees, making this the largest commencement in the history of this great university.
Now, 224 of you have earned law degrees. Where are our law grads? Good, make some noise, congratulations. More than 1,300 of you have earned master's degrees. Awesome, congratulations to our master's graduates. And are you ready? 6,225 of you are earning bachelor's degrees. Let's hear from you. Woo! Congratulations, graduates. Now, you have an awful lot to be proud of. But you didn't get to this day by yourself. Let's give a big round of applause for the 40,000 proud family and friends in the stands and others who couldn't be here today. This is your day, too. Congratulations. We have a wonderful keynote speaker for you today as well. Former United States Attorney General Eric Holder is here. And his daughter, Brooke, is a badger. And I hear she introduced her father to all things UW-Madison. Mr. Attorney General, I hear you're especially fond of our Starship robots. And I'm certainly looking forward to hearing you speak in just a few minutes. Thank you and welcome. Now, every one of you has worked hard to reach this day. There's one group I want to especially call out for whom today has a very special meaning. If you are part of the first generation in your family to earn a college degree, please stand as you're able and make some noise. Congratulations. That's a beautiful thing to see. I'm really so proud of all of you. Now, if you're a veteran, or serving on active duty or in the reserves, whether you're graduating or you're in the stands celebrating our graduates, please stand as you are able so we can thank you for your service to our nation. This is a day to celebrate, and it's also bittersweet. There are members of this graduating class who passed away before graduation, and we hold them in our hearts on this day. We also, this year, lost a beloved chancellor, the person who brought commencement back to Camp Randall Stadium. Chancellor Blake often said this was her favorite day of the year, and I know she would be so proud of every one of you. As we mark this day, I also want to acknowledge that it's been a tough few weeks for our campus community. A racist video posted online caused pain and anger and frustration. I know, and I hope you know, that the hateful and harmful words expressed in that video do not represent our campus community. No matter how loud such voices may seem at times, they are not who we want to be, and we can and must resolve not to let such voices define us. At the same time, yes. Thank you for joining me in that. At the same time, events like this illustrate resoundingly that we do still have a lot of work to do to be all that we aspire to be 
as a world-class university. And UW-Madison must still work to become a place where every person feels that they belong and that they flourish. Please join me in that hope. Now I need to say to you that this class, the class of 2023, is particularly special for me. Because in a manner of speaking, I'm also graduating, at least from my first academic year here at UW-Madison. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> and you've given me lots of good advice about how to be a badger. You told me where to look for turtles in the Arboretum. You warned me that spring would be a long time coming in sometimes painful fits and starts, and that it would probably snow in April and might even snow in May. But you also showed me how to walk out on the ice to Lady Liberty, and you certainly taught me how to jump around and how to support community in this amazing institution. Now, you don't have to be a Badger fan to be a Badger, but I have to say, I've loved cheering for the Badgers with so many of you. I mean, come on, what's not to love about watching Devin Robinson spike a volleyball, right? And class of 2023, you helped us break every national record for crowd size at women's sporting events this year. <laughs> Members of our seven-time national championship women's hockey team are well represented in this class. Hockey Badgers, where are you? Awesome. Congratulations! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> exactly. Thank you for an incredible year. Woo! Thank you for an incredible year. Now, for many of you, this may be your very last week of formal education ever. Yeah, that's kind of wild. Others of you will decide to pursue further graduate education, whether immediately or down the road. Whatever comes next, I know that you have developed the skills, experiences, and connections to others that can guide you and help you on your way. My hope for you is that your time here at UW-Madison has helped you to find and to stay true to your own personal GPS, the global positioning system that can give you a values-driven map to direct you, the GPS that lives inside of you and also outside in your family, with your friends, and throughout your professional life. I ask you not to lose sight of that GPS as you navigate your many choices and opportunities. But I'm also using GPS as a shorthand for three qualities that I hope and believe that you have meaningfully developed here and that will on top of all of your academic learning and knowledge, serve you well in the future. G for gratitude, P for purpose, and S for service to others. Values to hold on to. First, gratitude, nothing worthwhile happens alone. You are here today through your own work and drive and talents, absolutely. But every one of you has also been the recipient of the generosity of others. Family, friends, professors, mentors, and so many others who have supported and believed in you, sometimes when you didn't entirely believe in yourself. So th say thank you, often, authentically, 
and warm-heartedly. Remember and appreciate the support that helps you along the way. Pay it forward. And remember that sometimes you may even have received a helping hand in ways you're not even aware of. Second, purpose. I wish, I wish for each of you a life of purpose that gives you the chance to spend time pursuing things that you care about and that you find meaningful. I'm not saying you need to live with purpose every single minute. Please carve out time for fun, for serendipity, for binge watching your favorite show. There can be purpose in that too. But do ask yourself, in the words of the poet Mary Oliver, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? And finally, service. I hope that you will be part of something bigger than yourself. And I know that that's also part of what it means to be a badger. Every one of you has a story about making a difference. And I'll tell you just a couple. Samantha Angelina and Akshay Kalra, where are you? All right. When Sammy and Akshay learned that people in our community were going hungry because they couldn't get to the river food pantry during regular business hours, they worked with the pantry to design food lockers that allowed the user to pick up food with a limited time code, reducing food insecurity and giving families a measure of dignity. Today they receive bachelor's, yes, let's give them a big hand of, round of applause. Today they receive bachelor's degrees from our School of Human Ecology. Congratulations. And Marin Seafluth, where are you? Yay, there you are. Good, I can see you. Marin wanted to find a way to help preserve the way of life in the Wisconsin farming community where she grew up. So she developed a research project looking at how we can uplift small Wisconsin dairy farmers while also helping to reduce emissions from the big refrigeration trucks that are so important to the industry. She interned with leaders in the state assembly who are working on these issues to create better policy. Today, Marin receives a bachelor's degree from the Wisconsin School of Business. Congratulations. There are also 149 members of this class who have taken the teacher pledge and will soon be working in schools all over Wisconsin, helping to address the critical teacher shortage. To all of them and to the generous alumni whose support makes that program possible, thank you. These are just a few of the stories of the way that you have already made a difference. And there are so many ways in which you will continue to do so. And class of 23, your accomplishments are especially impressive, given that most of you were just freshmen when the pandemic hit. You left on your first spring break, and suddenly everything changed. You had to learn to learn virtually. You came back to quarantines and face coverings and the Badger badge and making reservations to go to your favorite State Street hangouts. And the pandemic changed so much, but it couldn't take away your exceptional accomplishments or your connections to each other. You won national awards for academic excellence. You started new businesses. You made beautiful music together, literally and figuratively, 
live and on Zoom. You learned how to ask for help when you needed it. And when the pandemic ended, it ended, you helped us set a new record for the number of students studying abroad. It's pretty amazing. Through it all, you also showed up for each other because that too is what it means to be a Badger. Class of 2023, you walked into Camp Randall today for the very last time as students. And you are going to be walking out as alumni of one of the greatest universities in the world. There's no doubt you are graduating into a world that looks pretty different than the one you might have planned for when you arrived here. You've learned to adapt to monumental change. And that's about the only thing we know the future will bring. More change, and sometimes unexpected. Along the way, you've learned a lot about what it means to be a Badger. I hope you'll continue to find gratitude, live with purpose, and be in service to something bigger than yourself. And I certainly hope that you will continue to be there for each other. You share a deep bond that I know will last a lifetime. And of course, come back and visit us often. You will always find a warm welcome here. And we hope that this will always be one of the places in life that feels like home. Congratulations, class of 2023, 2023, and on Wisconsin. <laughs> it's now my great honor to introduce Amy Blumenfeld Bogus, Vice President of the University of Wisconsin System Board of Regents, who will offer greetings and congratulations on behalf of the Regents. Amy is an attorney who practices law in Madison with a focus on representing victims of sensitive crimes and handling federal Title IX cases. She is also deeply involved with the National Tribal Trial College, located at the UW Law School, which is helping to address the critical shortage of lawyers in the tribal court system by training laypersons to provide basic legal services. Amy has served on the Board of Regents since 2020 and is passionate about this university. She and her husband both earn degrees here at UW-Madison, as have their three children. Please join me in giving a very warm welcome to Regent Vice President Bogus. Thank you, Chancellor Mnookin. On behalf of my fellow regents and the UW System President, Jay Rothman, I offer each of you my sincerest congratulations. For those of you who don't know what a region is, a regent is appointed by the monarch or by parliament, usually to govern a kingdom or state if the monarch or ruler is unable to do so. Okay, I know that's not me. I have been watching way too much Bridgerton. <laughs> Actually, as it applies to this university, a region is a member of the board of directors of the University of Wisconsin system appointed by the governor. My favorite part about being a regent is getting to meet with students. Every time I have the privilege of talking with students like you and hearing your stories, I know that the future is in great hands. When I graduated from the University of Wisconsin, unfortunately, a long time ago, I'm not gonna say how long ago it was, but the world looked very, very different than it does today. All of you have had to deal with challenges unique to our era, including the pandemic in the middle of those best 
college years, the bending power of social media, and now the infusion of AI in our daily lives. These transformative forces have caused unique and new challenges. Most notably, there has been a radical shift in one of the most important things that makes us who we are, and that is how we relate to one another. We have evolved as humans to need each other and trust in one another in order to be happy and successful. That trust is the fiber from which we build rather than tear apart. Trust is that catalyst that takes us from potential mediocrity sown from division to greatness sown by a common sense of purpose. You have the right and the power to right the ship and be the ambassadors of change. It is impressive and imperative to make that extra effort to engage directly with others and reap the positives of direct human interactions that is such a major part of our core emotional humanity, hardwired from eons of evolution. We all want to be heard and valued. Now back to what a region is. Unfortunately, as my kids have reminded me, it has nothing to do with royalty. It has everything to do with the task of advancing the mission of the University of Wisconsin and to do our very best to provide students with the tools so that you may go out there and apply your skills, creativity, and intellect to all corners of the state, the country, and the world. This is known as the enviable Wisconsin idea. You are all now and forever part of the Wisconsin idea. There are Badger alumni all across the globe waiting out there to welcome you into this elite club. Reach out to them and reach out to one another. Congratulations, class of 2023 on Wisconsin. Thank you, Regent President Bogus. I would now like to welcome senior class Vice President Marguerite White Wyatt to introduce our keynote speaker. Hello, graduates. Uh, okay, there's a lot of you. Just gonna get over that. Fellow graduates, I am proud to welcome Eric Holder Jr. to our 2023 commencement ceremony. Holder is an exceptional individual, having served as the country's 82nd Attorney General and the first African American to hold that office. His six year tenure was the third longest in history for an Attorney General. He's also an accomplished lawyer, having served in the government for over 30 years. He was appointed to various positions requiring U.S. Senate confirmation by Presidents Obama, Clinton, and Reagan. Throughout his career, Eric Holder has worked tirelessly to ensure equal justice for everyone and to protect the voting rights of all Americans. His dedication to helping others has led to multiple honors, including the Thurgood Marshall Lifetime Achievement Award from the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund. In addition to this, General Holder is also a proud Badger father. His daughter, Brooke, who is with him today, earned a bachelor's degree in history from UW-Madison. Welcome back, Brooke. Our years here at the university certainly did not come without challenges. We endured a global pandemic, and many of us took part in social movements as we sought to improve our country and our campus. Eric Holder's tenacity and commitment to making the world a better place mirror that of all of us on this campus. I am confident that his words will inspire us to strive towards making a difference in the world and uphold the values of justice and equality in both our professional and personal lives as we embark on our new journey. So without further ado, Eric Holder Jr.
Thank you so much, Marguerite, and uh, good afternoon, Wisconsin. How's it feel? How's it feel? All right. Chancellor Mnookin, faculty, staff, and administration, friends and relatives, members of the broader Wisconsin family, and most importantly, the class of 2023. I want to thank you all for the honor of celebrating with you today. Now, it is great to be back at Camp Randall. What a special, historic place. It's at the heart of my favorite Big Ten campus and my favorite state in the Midwest. Not as cold as Minnesota, not as flat as Illinois, and Michigan, well, forget Michigan. And, and so much better at football, men's basketball, women's ice hockey, women's volleyball. The list goes on and on and on. As the proud parent of a University of Wisconsin alumna class of 2019, I know a little about what you've been through to reach this moment. Long hours and late nights. Debates about everything under the sun, from politics to philosophy to religion, to the most contentious question of them all. Spotted cow or moon man? <laughs> all right, spotted cow? Moon Man, you've been through internships, externships, and study abroad programs spanning every continent except Antarctica. Though, of course, there's also an ice cube project that's opening a new window on Antarctica, which means that this university has not had just a global reach, but a physical presence on every continent for more than half a century. Or at least that was true. At least that was true until 2020, when COVID changed everything and turned your college experience upside down. Now, the year printed on your degree will forever set this class apart, marking you as unique in the annals of school history, a cohort tested by plague, by protests, and by politics, tested by a great deal more than exams, though I hear you also managed to squeeze a few of those in along the way. And while I'm sure there have been engaging lectures, thought-provoking class discussions, and favorite professors you'll remember fondly in the years to come, I know that right now that the pain of finals, thesis writing, and capstone projects may still be a little too painfully close. The good news is that as of this moment, all of that is behind you. Well, what? wait a minute. Except for you JDs. The rest of us are heading to the KK after the ceremony. <laughs> but you really need to start studying for the bar if you're going to be practicing outside of this state. So JDs, not quite yet. But class of 2023, my point is this. There are no students in this crowd today. You are now alumni of the University of Wisconsin. And That means two things. One, it's time to celebrate. You've worked hard. You've achieved something truly extraordinary, and we could not be prouder of you. But two, it also means that your time at this institution, one of the crown jewels of America's higher education system, is over. A significant chapter in your life is drawing to a close. Your future is upon you, and the stakes from this moment on are now much higher than the ones you faced here in Madison. And that is a good thing. Graduates, you don't need anyone to remind you about the challenges that we face in this moment, both as a nation and as a world. A climate in crisis, a planet driven by conflict, a country seemingly at war with itself over everything from gun control to reproductive control to control of our electoral system. You already know what the most urgent issues are because you're already leading the way, standing up for your most basic rights, fighting for those who are more vulnerable, speaking out against hatred, racism, and bigotry, especially when it rears its head uncomfortably close to home. Now, as Chancellor Mnookin said, 
Wisconsin Badgers just don't sit on the sidelines. You're expected to be in the arena. You're expected to lead. It's just who you are. It's who you have been trained to be. So I can't wait to watch this class leave its mark in every field and make a difference on every continent. But whether you're about to start a career in accounting or agriculture, economics or engineering, whether you consider yourself liberal or conservative, Republican or Democrat, or none of the above, there is one urgent imperative that demands your attention right this second, overrides every other priority, and constitutes the defining issue of our time, the protection of our democracy itself. Our, <laughs> our politics are seemingly paralyzed, dominated by special interests and too often the most extreme and outrageous voices. Our, our public discourse is infected with disinformation that's weaponized against fact, truth, and sensible solutions. Inequality and economic insecurity are real for too many and fuel massive upheaval. And all too often, the darkest undercurrents of our society make themselves known and take expression in destructive, zero-sum politics, and too often, too tragically, even violence. No wonder more and more people of all races and of all classes feel more alienated, powerless, and more distrustful by the day. No wonder millions fear that the system, and maybe the entire so-called global economy, is rigged against them. No wonder our society is turning inward and our nation seems bitterly divided. What this moment demands is something that's virtually unheard of, something that's virtually unheard of, even bordering on extinct in this political era. But graduates, it is also eminently within your power to create unity. National unity among the most difficult things to accomplish. Unity. We must absolutely be unified in our defense of the democracy that makes all other things in America possible. But, but here's the thing. Unity does not mean we need to agree about everything. Quite the opposite. And that was part of the message that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. brought to this very campus in 1965, when he visited the University of Wisconsin and spoke to a, a standing room only crowd of 3,000 students in the Stock Pavilion. He talked about the struggle for civil rights, the power of engagement, the righteousness of peaceful protest. And, and just after leaving campus, he reminded a reporter that, and I quote, we're at a terrible stage when we confuse dissent with disloyalty and we view every protester as a traitor. Unquote. You know, after all, this country was founded on dissent and forged through revolution, born of competing and contradictory visions of how America would govern itself, what we would stand for, and who we, who we as a people might aspire to become. We've always been a loud, boisterous, argumentative nation, and we always will be. That's uniquely American. That's a good thing. That's an attribute, not a deficiency. American democracy at its best provides a process by which we can surface our disagreements and hopefully come to constructive solutions. But democracies, including ours, are inherently fragile. Just because our system has worked in the past is no guarantee that it will in the future. And you don't need to look far to see the scars and the reminders of what can happen when democracy breaks down. Authoritarian regimes rose in Europe in the early 20th century, not because fascism was strong, but because the defense of democracy was weak. A century before Dr. King visited campus, the site where this stadium now stands was occupied by Camp Randall, a Union Army training installation during the Civil War. And for millennia before that, this was the ancestral, uh, ancestral land of the Ho-Chunk people. A striking reminder that even here, in this place of academic and athletic achievement, even now, on this day of celebration, we are in close communion with our history. It's real, it's tangible, it's right beneath our feet. You know, Dr. King's office often quoted as saying that the arc of the moral universe is long, 
but it bends towards justice. And that's true, but only because throughout our history, every generation of Americans, from the battlefield of Gettysburg to the beaches of Normandy, from Selma to Montgomery, to a tavern named Stonewall, every generation has been called to put their hands on that ark and to pull it toward justice, to protect, to renew, and to expand our democracy, and to strengthen our capacity for self-determination. Every generation, and no American generation has failed. Now, class of 2023, it's your turn. That arc will not bend unless you pull it, little by little, day after day, year after year, with determination and with commitment. So when you hear people fan the flames of xenophobia for their own cynical self-interest, you have a responsibility to demand better, to speak out for civility, tolerance, and understanding, especially among those with whom you happen to disagree. When inequality touches your communities, widening economic and racial divisions and fueling instability, you, the women and men superbly trained at this institution, must respond with solutions that make America more fair and more just. You are capable of this. When elected officials try to change the rules and distort democracy by restricting who can vote, who can speak out, even those voices can be, whose voices can be heard on the floor of a legislature you must be vehement in your opposition because such actions dishonor those who have marched and organized and sacrificed and suffered and died for the most fundamental of American rights. Make no mistake, no matter your beliefs or your political affiliation, everyone here owes prior generations, from the founders to the abolitionists to the suffragettes, to the women and men who gave their lives on foreign shores and domestic sites so that we might be more free and more fair. We all owe that debt that must be repaid by dedicating ourselves to the defense of a system that has made America, even if not perfect, truly exceptional. And when fear... And when fear and division threaten to turn us away from one another and our nation away from the greater world, you must remind us all of that fundamental truth that animates every democratic society and makes this campus such a wonderful and welcoming place. The notion that we are stronger, in the words of historian John Meacham, the wider we open our arms. As I look around this crowd of excited, energetic, and yes, a few, <laughs> Slightly hungover faces. <laughs> I see, I understand, I was there. I'm not just optimistic about where the class of 2023 will lead us. I'm inspired, I'm invigorated, I'm filled with confidence, and I'm filled with optimism. Dr. King didn't come to the University of Wisconsin nearly 60 years ago at the, at the height of the Civil Rights Movement to ask your predecessors merely to speculate about the future. He came here because he had the opportunity, they had the opportunity and the responsibility to shape it. And that's why I'm here today, to ask you to shape not only your future, but the nation's. Graduates, that opportunity, that responsibility, that breathtaking power now passes to you. I want all of you to do well, but I also want each and every one of you to do good. How will you use your newfound power as graduates? What will the class of 2023 contribute to this university's proud legacy? What will you dream and then do that early generations could scarcely imagine? Extraordinary and difficult times produce extraordinary and accomplished leaders. The fact that you are now graduating into this crucible with a degree from the University of Wisconsin means you're right where you belong and right where we need your energy, your ideas, and your leadership the most. You are the leaders that we need. So I look forward to all that you will do 
and achieve from this moment on. Our nation, our world is counting on you. I am counting on you. I have great faith in each and every one of you. So congratulations once again. Best of luck. Now go out there and change the world. Thank you, Attorney General Holder. Thank you. At last night's commencement ceremony for doctoral candidates, we awarded a very special honorary degree. Honorary degrees are awarded not for the completion of a course of study, but for an extraordinary life and for contributions to the Wisconsin idea. The Wisconsin idea signifies a general principle that education should influence people's lives beyond the boundaries of the classroom. This year's recipient is Cecil Garvin, a highly respected member and tribal official of the Ho-Chunk Nation and member. And member and leader of the Deer Clan, he is also a decorated veteran who served three tours of duty in Vietnam. Garvin is one of the very few fluent speakers of the Ho-Chunk language, which he has worked tirelessly to preserve for future generations. His devotion to public service and the Ho-Chunk language, education and advocacy are the embodiment of the Wisconsin idea. Please join me in a round of congratulations for Dr. Cecil Garvin. It's now time for the conferral of our law and graduate degrees. I call upon Dan Takaji, Dean of the Law School. Candidates for the degrees, Juris Doctorate and Master of Laws, Legal Institutions, will you please rise as you are able? Chancellor Manukin. Dean Takaji. These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of the courses in law. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of the law school, I present these candidates for their degrees. On the recommendation of the faculty of the law school and under the authority granted by the University of Wisconsin System Board of Regents, I confer on you the degree Juris Doctor or Master of Laws Legal Institutions. Please join me in recognizing the achievements of our law degree candidates. <laughs> candidates may be seated. I would now like to call upon William Karpus, Dean of the Graduate School, who will present the candidates for graduate degrees. Candidates for graduate degrees will please rise as you are able. Chancellor Manukin. Dean Karpus. On the recommendation of the graduate faculty, I present these candidates for graduate degrees in their respective fields educational specialist, master of accountancy, master of arts, master of business administration, master of engineering, master of international public affairs, master of music, master of professional French studies, master of public affairs, 
Master of Science. Master of Social Work. <laughs> These scholars have successfully completed the requirements of the courses in graduate studies. Upon the recommendation of the graduate faculty, I present these candidates for degrees. On the recommendation of the faculty of the graduate school and under the authority granted by the University of Wisconsin System Board of Regents, you will be admitted to the appropriate graduate degree. Please join me in recognizing the achievements of our graduate degree candidates. Let's give them a huge round of applause. You may be seated. <laughs> on, on a day of celebration, it is appropriate and important that we acknowledge a difficult few weeks on our campus. In the wake of these recent events, the senior class officers, with the support of the chancellor's office, invited a pair of seniors to share their experiences as black students here at UW-Madison and all the struggles and triumphs that come along with that. They will also share how their time has been shaped by racism. While this may be difficult to hear, we thank them for their honesty as we strive to live up to our aspirations of a community in which all of us can flourish. Because this invitation was extended only recently, their names do not, did not make the printed program. However, they are included in the online program, which you can view through this QR code. But we are pleased to welcome Faith Ochoku and Sydney Bob as additional speakers today. Faith is from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and is earning a bachelor's degree in neurobiology with a certificate in French. Faith is a member of the Black Student Union and served this past year as president of the Anana Maps Pre-Health Society, an organization for BIPOC students interested in the healthcare field. Sydney is from Boston, Massachusetts and is earning a bachelor's degree in African Cultural Studies. She is a member of our first wave performing arts scholarship program and serves as a student leader in the College of Letters and Sciences Ambassador Program. Please join me in welcoming Sydney Bob and Faith Ochoko. Okay. Being from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, coming to a school where the black population takes up less than 3% was a huge culture shock to me. The idea of being surrounded by a diverse population of people to being the only black person standing in my classes had become a norm that many of my black peers and I shared. I spent my first year living here at what the time had lost its reputation as shitty witty and took on pretty witty the second floor, which housed the Multi-Learning Cultural Committee, had become my new home. Although it was cut short, I was blessed to have still been given the opportunity to meet several people that looked like me through my learning community and scholarship program, the People Program. Shout out People Program. <laughs> At the end of the road of my journey, I stand here in reflection as I think about everything it took for me to get here the numerous hours spent at college, library, and the Black Cultural Center in the Red Gym, the tears that fell onto several exam papers as I thought it was time for me to give up, the daunting do at 1159s that plagued our heads so often it seemed like clockwork, I was tired. Being a black pre-med student, it seemed that the odds were stacked against me. Every single obstacle was set up for me to fail. But through perseverance, hard work, and the support of my community, my black community, I was able to thrive. And for that, 
I want to give my thanks. I want to thank the students that, when I was a freshman, were upperclassmen and paved the way for my peers and I, that told us the honest and blatant truth about what this university had to offer us, the students that led the 1969 black student strike on this campus. We thank them for the spaces we sit in today in the VCC. Without them, we could not have the African Studies Department, organizations like SICK, and the Black Power Coalition today. Go. <laughs> we wouldn't be standing. We wouldn't be standing here speaking to you if it weren't for them. We are upholding a legacy that has been bestowed upon us by the hundreds of Black people that have put in years of work for us to be here. Moving to Madison, Wisconsin from Boston, Massachusetts seemed like a truly ridiculous idea to me when it was presented in March of 2019. Sometimes it still does feel like a truly ridiculous idea. But little did I know that it would lead to one of the best experiences of my life. And for that, I say thank you First Wave, thank you 12 Co, but most of all, thank you Gia Euler Plath. I spent my first year in the studio learning community when it was still located in the illustrious state-of-the-art Celery Residence Hall. <laughs> Besides some of my cohort members and I, you could count the amount of black students on our floor on one hand. In October of 2019, UW-Madison was at the center of controversy with the homecoming video, and I was truly reevaluating my decision to come here. In January 2020, my family experienced a devastating house fire that made me grateful to return to Madison and a sense of normalcy. But then March 2020 happened, and it kept happening. But by the time I returned to Madison that August, I was drained in more ways than one. In my new role as a house fellow for my beloved studio learning community, I had to learn how to navigate being a student and a student employee to students who had just graduated high school and started college life in isolation. In the years that followed, I've been trying to keep my head above water and enjoy the rest of my time in Madison as healthily as possible. The racist video that went viral on Monday, Mar on Monday, May 1st, 2023, also known as Decision Day for many high school students across the country, shook UW-Madison's student body, specifically the black students. I say shook and not stunned because we've seen this before. The many missteps that this university and its administrators have made in response to the video proved what we had already thought that this university is not and has never been for our progression as black students and global citizens. The protests and demands that followed were the work of the Black Power Coalition, a powerful organization of student leaders on campus. Witnessing their discussions, disagreements, and resolution to this campus was the epitome of a full circle moment for me as a student. Knowing that this university is in the good hands of trailblazers, headstrong, and humble black students, that means something to those students who made the choice to attend this university this upcoming fall. To the Black Power Coalition, your hard work is not in vain. Rest if you must, but don't you quit. If no one has us, we have us. And if they don't see us, make them feel us. And lastly, to all of the black graduates, celebrate. Celebrate the radical accomplishment of not only surviving in a hostile environment, but excelling in one. Many of us were deprived of the opportunity to enjoy our last days here. We missed out on the little things like last day classes of our undergraduate career or taking graduation pictures while we organized and demanded for a safer UW-Madison for our future black students, seniors. These moments are the one that deserve to be remembered and treasured forever. Do that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sydney and Faith. We appreciate your leadership 
We appreciate your courage. We appreciate what you have done for this university. Thank you. Liam McLean is today's student speaker. Liam has a reputation for going all out in everything he does. As one of his friends put it, Liam has one speed, and it's 100 miles an hour. That has certainly been the case on our campus. Liam has excelled in numerous student leadership positions, including bringing great energy and ideas this year to his role as senior class president. Liam is from the Milwaukee suburb of Fox Point and is earning a bachelor's degree in political science with certificates in entrepreneurship and leadership. Please join me in welcoming Liam McLean, who will offer remarks on behalf of the class of 2023. My fellow graduates, we should be proud, not for completing the degrees we're honoring today, but because of what each of us individually overcame to make this possible. We all had our hurdles, and I would like to briefly share mine. For a lot of my life, I didn't know much about myself, but I knew three things. I felt lonely, lost, and afraid. Growing up, I suffered from a stubborn speech and language delay. I lacked the ability to enunciate many sounds, and even worse, struggled to compose sentences. This hardship forced my parents to make difficult choices for my education, which altogether resulted in years of bullying and being an outcast. It was painful to not be heard, to not feel welcomed, to be treated like I didn't matter. But as painful as it was, I'm glad it happened. The rejection fueled a redirection I was lucky enough to have found people who gave love through patience, who would wait for me to get the sentences out and the sounds right. The more people were willing to talk to me, the more fluid I became. My mom used to be so worried I would never be able to find my own words. And now, she's among the many looking for my off switch. I've come a long way. And looking back on this, I realized my motivation for becoming the best communicator I could be was rooted in how the speech challenges impacted me. That revealed a deeper philosophical truth that I believe has shaped our class and will come to define our generation. The truth is that adversity is the seed of greatness. The truth is, if we are to become great, we must confront adversity. This is how we found our greatness as a class, and this is how we will become great as Generation Z. Not too long into our class experience, we were introduced to our own adversity, the pandemic. As we began to navigate newfound independence, the fragile foundations we built for ourselves collapsed, and we free fell into an abyss of uncertainty. Seclusion became reality, Within moments, our learning lost connection, scores of local businesses shuttered for good, and ultimately, our mental health deteriorated. I imagine many of you felt how I felt as a child, lonely, lost, and afraid. More than ever, we were faced with our own selves and our mind's power in shaping our perspective. However, these moments, as challenging as they were, brought out the humanity and the ingenuity of our class. When we returned to campus, we faced that adversity head on. In our wait for a vaccine, we unapologetically fought for fair academic accommodations. And even more importantly, we took the charge in destigmatizing mental health. Members of our class have founded multiple student organizations dedicated to mental, to mental wellness, which will serve students for years to come. We were there for each other, and we didn't wait for someone else to solve our problems. This is what made us great. And recently, by the Black Power Coalition's leadership, we've built upon this. When the integrity of our university came into question, our black students 
led the campus community's answer of solidarity, compassion, and solutions. This all demonstrates a greater truth about Gen Z. You see, critics, they say we complain. I think really, we just see the gaps. We've come so far and have built so much character, yet as we know, more adversity awaits. We will inherit historic responsibility. Climate change, systemic inequality, and polarization are among the mountains we must move to build a world better than the one we found. It may seem daunting, but if there's any group in Gen Z that can take the lead, it's us. Among us are engineers, economists, social scientists, and so many others. Yes, we possess our generational resilience, but even more, we embody something sacred to this university, the Wisconsin idea. My fellow graduates, our strength lies not only in our ability to confront critical issues, but also in our ability to endure them. The seed of adversity has been planted so that we will cultivate generational greatness. In the years to come, those historic responsibilities we face can become hallmarks of our contributions to society. We're in this together. We will do this together. And as Badgers, we will lead the way. Thank you. Good afternoon, graduates and guests. My name is Erin Shoemaker, and I'm the philanthropy director of the senior class office. I am so honored to be here today to welcome you to Alumni Hood on behalf of the Wisconsin Alumni Association. To become a UW-Madison alumni is to join a collection of forward thinkers. For the past four years, we have been guided by the thousands of individuals who have graced the terrace and Camp Randall years before we ever did, and today we join them in the mission of leaving a legacy for those who will follow in our footsteps. Certainly, we can fill those shoes. Our time here has not always been easy, but throughout its ups and downs, we have remained resilient and embodied forward thinking through our dedication to improving the well-being of all students. This call to action is central to the many identities that our class has held here at UW-Madison. From choosing the Center for Healthy Minds Higher Education Fund as our senior class gift, to taking initiatives to create a larger conversation about mental health and well-being, we can be confident that our drive to create solutions is true to who, are, who we are. This identity is ours for the rest of our lives, connecting us to each other, to the generations that have come before us, and to the generations yet to come. As of today, the Wisconsin Alumni Association is no longer for other people. Now it is for us, for the forward thinkers, the solution-oriented innovators, the class of 2023, the Badgers. You are a Badger. Everything you are has brought you to this day. You are a reflection of your outer experiences and your inner spark. You are the embodiment of the things you've done and the things you've yet to do. So keep being you, and whatever comes next, we'll be here. Welcome to Alumnihood. Graduates, if you would all take a look in your program right now, uh, you wouldn't see anything. Um, but you would see that we're about three quarters of the way through. And given that we're here in Camp Randall, I think that it's only right that we all celebrate with one final jump around. Hit it! Sit. 
Thank you, Bucky. Where's Bucky go? Thank you, Bucky. At this point in our program, I am pleased to acknowledge those bachelor's degrees candidates who have distinguished themselves scholastically by ranking in the top 20% of their school or college, or by participating in the honors program. These students are attired with honor stoles, solid cardinal red or white with red chevrons. I would like these students to stand as you are able and ask that you all join me in recognizing their achievements. Candidates may be seated. And now it is time for the conferral of bachelor's degrees. I call upon Glenda Gillespie, Dean of the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences. Candidates for the bachelor's degrees in the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences will please rise as they are able. <laughs> Chancellor Mnuchin. Dean Gillespie. On the recommendation of the faculty of the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences, I present these candidates for the following degrees. Bachelors of Science. Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business Management. Bachelor of Science in Biological Systems Engineering. Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics. Candidates may be seated. I now call upon Ian Robertson, Dean of the College of Engineering. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Engineering will please rise as they are able. Chancellor Murukin. Dean Robertson. On the recommendation of the faculty of the College of Engineering, I present these candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Naval Science, Bachelor of Science Biomedical Engineering, Bachelor of Science Chemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science Civil Engineering, Bachelor of Science, Computer Engineering. Bachelor of Science, Electrical Engineering. Bachelor of Science, Engineering Mechanics. Bachelor of Science, Engineering Physics. Bachelor of Science, Geological Engineering. Bachelor of Science, Industrial Engineering. Bachelor of Science, Material Science and Engineering. Bachelor of Science, Mechanical Engineering. Bachelor of Science, Nuclear Engineering. Candidates may be seated. I now call upon Susan Zeski, Associate Dean of the College of Letters and Science. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the great College of Letters and Science may rise as they are able. <laughs> Chancellor Mnuchin. Associate Dean Zeski. On the recommendation of the faculty of the College of Letters and Science, I present candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts Journalism. <laughs> Bachelor of Landscape Architecture. Bachelor of Music. Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Applied Mathematics, Engineering, and Physics. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Journalism. Bachelor of Social Work. <laughs> Candidates may be seated. I now call upon Vallabh Sambamurthy, Dean 
of the School of Business. Candidates for the bachelor's degrees in the School of Business will please rise as they are able. <laughs> Chancellor Minukin. Dean Selma Murphy. On the recommendation of the faculty of the fabulous Wisconsin School of Business, <laughs> I present these candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Candidates may please be seated. I now call upon Diana Hess, Dean of the School of Education. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the School of Education will please rise as they are able. <laughs> Chancellor Manukin, Dean Hess. On the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Education, I present these candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science Art, Bachelor of Science Art Education, Bachelor of Science Athletic Training, Bachelor of Science Dance, Bachelor of Science Education, Bachelor of Science Education Studies, Bachelor of Science Health Promotion and Health Equity, Bachelor of Science Kinesiology. <laughs> Bachelor of Science Physical Education. Bachelor of Science Rehabilitation Psychology. And Bachelor of Science Theater and Drama. Candidates may be seated. I now call upon Soyen Shim. Dean of the School of Human Ecology. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the School of Human Ecology will please rise as they are able. <laughs> Chancellor Nukin. Dean Shim. On the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Human Ecology, I present these candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Science, Community and Nonprofit Leadership. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Consumer Behavior and Marketplace Studies. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Human Development and Family Studies. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Interior Architecture. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Personal Finance. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Textiles and Fashion Design. Candidates may be seated. I now call upon Linda Scott, Dean of the School of Nursing. Candidates for bachelor's degrees in the School of Nursing will please rise as you are able. Dean Scott. On the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Nursing, I present these candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science, Nursing. <laughs> candidates may be seated. I now call upon Stephen Swanson, Dean of the School of Pharmacy. Candidates for the bachelor's degree in the School of Pharmacy, please rise and cheer as loud as you can. <laughs> Chancellor Manukin. Dean Swanson. On the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Pharmacy, I present these candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Science, Pharmaceutical Sciences. Bachelor of Science, Pharmacology and Toxicology. Now that you're done cheering, you may be seated. <laughs> All right, everybody. At this time, I invite all of our bachelor's degree candidates to please rise as they are able for the conferral of degrees. Look at this.
on the recommendation of the faculty and under the authority granted by the University of Wisconsin System Board of Regents, you will be admitted to the bachelor's degree appropriate to the courses you have completed. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Class of 2023, you have arrived at an important milestone, the moment when you transition from students to alumni. Tradition dictates that before degree conferral, candidates will wear their tassel on the right side of their mortar board. And after commencement, your new status as graduates to symbolize that your tassel is worn on the left. Graduates, now is the time. Please move your tassels. Graduates, this is your day, and you are going to rock the world. Congratulations to all our graduates. Thank you to the family members and friends whose support and encouragement made this very proud day possible. Best wishes to all of you, and of course, on Wisconsin. To conclude our wonderful celebration today, please join the Mead Winter School of Music Commencement Band in singing our alma mater varsity. Congratulations again.